Hello and what is up my friends, it is ThunderBob here and tonight we're going to be taking a look at a new accessory. I picked this up, this is for the Switch. Uh, I don't do a lot of Switch coverage on the channel, I do play the Switch occasionally in my downtime, I'm mostly a PC player, but when a big game like Tears of the Kingdom comes out or the Metroid uh, Remaster comes out, I definitely pick up my Switch. And uh, I was having some trouble, I had um, my, my Joy-Con stopped working, uh, it wasn't drift, it was actually the right bumper stopped working. And uh, I got a replacement, but it made me kind of go down the rabbit hole of looking at new controller options. And I saw this thing. This is a, a Nixie uh, Wizard. It's a wireless uh, controller in it. it. It may just look like a, a WaveBird controller. I'm going to do the comparison here. Here is my WaveBird I grew up with. In fact, it has power because I still use this occasionally. This is one of my favorite controllers of all time. For Smash Brothers, it's amazing. And this really, really, you know, is pretty similar uh, in, in size and, and control and everything. Uh, we're going to talk about this controller. I'm going to show you some comparisons of it against like a Steam Deck with and without it set into the uh, the actual Switch. Uh, you could use this either standalone or actually attached. I'll show you. There's two buttons here on the back. And this is a little... Let me get this out of the way. Pops right off here. Yeah. like that it's a little so this is just like a little plastic there's no electronics or anything it's just a plastic uh, bumper for it uh, and then you can take your switch and just like any other controller slide this in and i apologize you'll see i have some unicorn stickers on the back this is the switch actually my wife usually uses and my daughter has defaced slide in the other part bam you have a gigantic switch like this thing i'm going to show in comparison to the steam deck it's about now as large as the steam deck uh but yeah let's jump right in and talk about this i'm gonna do a very brief unboxing here i got this uh maybe a month ago six weeks ago i've been traveling so for the last uh, couple weeks i've been on the road and i've been using my switch a whole lot i've been using this controller the majority of that time and um if you are interested, I you can use the code THUNDERBOB to get 10% off this device or any device on the Nixie website. I did pay for this out of pocket. I did not get any discount or any free product or anything, so this is all my own opinion. But if you do want a discount on it and want to give me a little kickback on it, for, feel free to use the code THUNDERBOB. And uh, here it is. It, it's actually packaged pretty well. You got a little instruction booklet. You got the controller. Um, the accessories are in here. You get uh, cable. And a couple of other nice little goodies in here. Let's pop this bad boy open. Uh, you get this little charging cable. And you also uh, get these extra gates. So you can pop off the gates on the controller. And either use the octagonal gates, which are very similar to the original GameCube controller. Or you can use circle, which is more similar to what most modern controllers would be using. And here's just a quick comparison of the WaveBird the Nixie Wizard, and just the default Joy-Cons in a cradle. And I gotta say, it does feel very reminiscent of the Wave Bird. That's really what they're emulating here. And uh, the only thing that feels a little off is that right stick is raised up just a little bit. I'm gonna go into more detail on that later. And then um, the actual triggers were a lot more like concave. Like you'd actually like more fit your finger inside of it. There is a little bit of concave on the, the Nixie, but it is not as dramatic as it was on the original WaveBird controller, which I really liked. And here's the device just uh, being compared to a number of my other handheld devices, the Steam Deck, uh, the Switch with the Joy-Cons on. And here's one of the most dramatic comparisons. Here is the Switch with the Joy-Cons, and here is the Switch with the Nixie Wizard attached to it. You can see it is now the same size as the Steam Deck. It definitely hinders the capabilities of traveling. Like the Steam Deck is not something that's pocketable at all. The, the base switch, you know, is not quite pocketable, but it is much more mobile than the Steam Deck in my opinion. But when you add these on, it actually, the switch is bulkier than the Steam Deck. It's slightly wider, it's definitely taller, and it's just kind of awkward. Like even when it's just sitting here, the way it's angled is not very flat and uh, makes travel just a little bit awkward with it. Okay. Uh, now, I'm going to kind of just give my thoughts. Uh, you know, this is a review after using this device for about five weeks or so, primarily playing Tears of the Kingdom. I put about, I, I think I beat Tears of the Kingdom in about 70 hours, and I probably spent about 30 of that on the default 
joy cons and then this came in the mail and i probably spent the other 30 to 40 hours primarily using this device and i gotta say your enjoyment of this is probably going to be predicated on did you grow up with a gamecube are you familiar with the layout it's definitely different the abyx layout is slightly different and it works really well for some games some games you do need to to customize the configuration a little bit which you can either in the game or the switch also has an ability to let you reconfigure every button per game uh, the buttons themselves are all pretty nice, except the A is a little mushy, uh, but the B, Y, X feel nice. The A, it works. I've never had it not register, but it doesn't have a lot of like pushback. So like if you're playing a game where you had to press it repeatedly, I feel like it just, it, it would work, but it doesn't feel very smooth. Um, the ZL, ZR, R, and L, these are very clicky. The, uh, the Z or the R and the L. And then these, they're clicky, but they have like a little bit more distance to them. Whereas the R and the L are like, you just barely tap them. And I kind of like that. Uh, it's different, like, especially the ZL and the ZR, like if they were trying to emulate um, the, the WaveBird, that had like a lot of distance on it because some games actually had like, depending on how far you pulled it, you'd go faster, things like that. Uh, not a lot of games support that these days. This is really just like, it's a click. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not one-to-one -one with the GameCube. Don't expect it to be. Um, the stick is, is a little mushy for my taste. It works. Um, I haven't used it a whole lot other than, like, you know, in, in Tears of the Kingdom, you press, uh, you know, to, to summon your horse and stuff like that. Um, my one complaint with the controller other than the A button is um, the stick here. Uh, they're both at the same height, which on the right, for some reason, it's not an issue for me. Like, it's real easy to get my thumb there. My issue more, and it's a little awkward to show this, but like, okay, so I'm using it, and my thumb is here. And then when I want to move over, look how high, like, I have to raise my thumb to hit this stick. It's very awkward. Uh, I think the solution is going to be just to get a new thumbstick. Like, this is, I'll show you this. It's very easy to pop this off. Um, but... I, I think I might get a shorter distance uh, right thumbstick. If I can get it in yellow, it would be nice just to match the original the original GameCube layout. Um, but that feels very awkward. It's just like how far my thumb has to move. And it doesn't feel like that on, uh, you know, the original WaveBird controller because that had a much shorter distance. It doesn't feel like that on the Switch standard sticks. It doesn't feel like that on, like, a Steam Deck. The Steam Deck feels just perfect, in my opinion. Um, but that... That's that my only other complaint, really, with the device. I'm going to show you this real quick here. To pop these off, there's little nubs here. You turn it, and then you pull this. It looks like I broke it, but it didn't. And this is how you change the octagonal gates. And there you go. That's the Hall Effect sensor in there. This could be swapped out real easily. So I think I'm going to actually order uh, an analog... A stick with a shorter throw on it and I think and I'm just gonna pop this back on simple as putting everything back together and with a little bit of pressure it's back to normal honestly it feels like you're gonna break it when you do this like it's you, you have to put a lot more pressure than you would think so you spin this little dial you'll see there's like a little tab at the bottom spin that pull really hard uh, I've switched out from the octagonal gates to the circular gates just because I'm more familiar with those i've used those a lot more um but if you want the more authentic gamecube experience you can use that octagonal gate uh, a couple other minor gripes um there is on the bottom two charging ports uh so if you want to charge this when it's in controller mode you need to plug in each side independently most of the time this is on my switch so most of the time this is charging through the switch and through the switch dock but if you want to charge this um, you know, the controllers themselves, you have to, there's no middle charging port. Some of the, the pro controllers actually have like a middle charging that will charge the whole unit, but this is more or less like two controllers. Like when you're, when you're, um, connecting this, like to a PC, this does work on PC. The, the PC actually thinks this is like two separate controllers. It's not one unit. This middle piece is really just like plastic. There's no electronics. There's no, you know, um, PC in there. There's no, no uh, computer in there. This is just two controllers and this little plastic piece holds it all together. Otherwise, it really feels pretty nice in the hand. Uh, the ABYX, that's going to be a personal opinion. Did you grow up in the GameCube? Can you uh, get familiar with it? Uh, I think it works wonderfully for 
um, you know, like the GameCube remasters. Um, I played Metroid Prime uh, remaster on it, and it's perfect for that. It's so nice. I played some Smash Brothers on it. I played Mario Kart with it. I played 30 hours of Tears of the Kingdom. And honestly, Tears of the Kingdom is the one that took the most configuration to get quite right. Um, you can swap in-game uh, the sprint and the jump button. Um, or you can go into the actual switch level uh, control management and just change all the buttons. Eventually, I just learned to get used to it. And my, my muscle memory kind of figured out where everything was. But it takes a little bit of getting used to on something like Tears of the Kingdom. But the sticks are really nice. Other than that... that right stick being a little high everything else really nice uh hall effect sensor so you shouldn't get drift on it uh the other nice thing is you have these back buttons and those can be programmed to do anything on the same side so the back one here will work on anything on this side of the controller the back one on this side will work on anything that's just a limitation of the switch um but the main thing I, for tears of the kingdom uh, towards the end of the game, um, I was I was kind of just done, and I just wanted to get it over with. And I used the dupe bug, kill me, you know, if, if you're thinking that's cheating. I used the dupe bug to dupe a couple of things, and that involved hitting, uh, I think it was B and Y at the same time. So you would glide, and then when you're in the air, you had to hit these buttons when you're in the menu. And it was hard to get it right, but I was able to set this back bumper button to be both of those buttons at the same time. So I would jump, glide, hit that button once, it would automatically dupe, but I could do it over and over again. So it's kind of like, it's a nice programmable button that you can set to do multiple buttons if you need to. It's a good macro. Um, there's some turbo functionality, which I really haven't messed with. Uh, there are, let me see if I've got power. Yeah, okay. These buttons do light up. I don't really like that, um, but you can dim them. Um, yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy with this. I. Yeah, so that's that's it. Uh, I really enjoyed this. This is my new way to play the Switch. Um, I have not found a game that I could not, you know, run with this thing. Uh, I may switch out that stick like I mentioned. Otherwise, it's just about perfect. And if you're a fan of the GameCube, I think you will find this thing just a, a, a really a game changer. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in this, I'll have a link to the Nixie Gaming website. It is $69.00 with the code thunderbob which i'll also have in the description down below you can get uh 10 off and um yeah if you have used this or if you've got any thoughts on it please drop me a comment below and if you enjoy what i'm doing please do like subscribe and just thank you once again for watching everyone have a good night